Hello and welcome to the EEPROM 9. Today's subject of the video is not this lovely um, Chinese Nixie tube just chilling on the desk here. We'll put him away in the box. We have another one here. These are both dead by the way because dodgy Chinese sellers. Yay! It's the Sinclair Cambridge Calculator. I've had this for a few months now and it kind of arrived a bit janky and not worky and because of their cheap janky construction it's still kind of a bit janky and not worky in places. But this is actually quite an interesting calculator as it is one of the early Sinclair pocket calculators. I've had this thing completely apart in efforts to fix it and was successful because there were some issues. I believe this was actually originally a kit form because they release these back in kits these days. Although good luck getting the kits these days so you can actually put them together. I'd love to get hold of a vintage kit to put together like this. But good luck. So we're going to take it apart, but before we take it apart, because this thing is janky, I want to show you an interesting fact that actually makes it share the same family of chipset that the Royal Digital 5T calculator that has, which was also made in 1973. That's for the uh, chipset of this. Right, have the batteries died? No, they have not. So whenever you divide anything by zero, such as one, it will go through and it will actually try and calculate it. Well, this is not the only calculator that does that. And the chipsets are indeed very similar. Now, uh, this is 0 divide 1. The only thing is the batteries keep disconnecting and for like milliseconds and cra causing it to crash. So this sometimes takes a few attempts. 0 divide 1. No, it crashed again. Zero, no crashed. <laughs> this is what I mean. The contacts in this thing are absolutely useless. There we go. And if we hold it up to where the camera can actually see the display, because it's one of these beautiful old school dim bubble LEDs, you can see it's reacting in basically exactly the same way as the Royal Digital down here. <laughs> which if you go back far enough you can find the video in which I actually um, redid the display uh, with I used a nine digit VFD because that's just what I could find at the time and to me back then it was expensive because it cost like nine quid but I was on like university budget so as you can see we've got some spacers to hold the batteries in because yeah <laughs> That's why they're janky. I mean, when you solder blobs to try and increase the contact here, this thing has an absolutely woefully terrible build quality. Here's the power switch. That took its own amount of configuration. This, this, this is how terrible the power switch is. It is literally just a bit of tin that goes up against solder blobs, but my god, you have to have the solder blobs at the right size or it's not going to do anything. So yeah, the power switch is terrible. The battery contacts are terrible. In fact, one of these is very jankily soldered in because it broke, because it's terrible. As much as, much as I love the actual aesthetics of Sinclair designs, I really do love the way they look. The build quality is absolute shit. It really is. There's, there's some things which have fine build quality, like Spectrums and that, but this is just... So terrible, you have to love it for that. It is just awful build quality, and I'm glad I have it. You can get these for quite reasonable prices as well, probably because there's just so many of them, and they come apart really easy. So we pop this open, and you can very much instantly see this was built by someone in their lair with janky ass cabling that's half falling off there so I'm probably going to have to resolder that back in place the resistor network on the actual chip which is a C550 now remember what I said about the um, chipset being very similar to what's this let's have a look at what's in this one 
just to demo what I was saying. Also comes about just as easily, but has a far, far, far superior build quality. And oh look, C570. So you got a very similar chipset. Uh, I believe this was made in about the same year as well, 73, but the date code isn't all that easy to see, although it looks like 74 for this one. So this is actually made later. And you can see on the chip here, we're not too much interested in going over the Royal Digital. There's actually a little, someone's actually drawn, I don't know if the lighting of the um, webcam is going to show this, actually has done a little tick on it. As you can see, the um, this is very much hand wired in place. I actually had to redo several of these when I got it because they were shorting out against each other leading to a whole load of ghosting. This is just a resistor network, one mega ohm, nothing fancy, nothing too funky. Number of diodes, these all work. Originally I thought this chip had failed, which is a 7105N made by ITT and is basically as rare as rocking horse shit. So you're not going to come across a, one of these at any point. Um, Anyway, because I actually was looking for them on eBay and whatnot to see what was inside. It's very simple because it's basically a single chip calculator and you can actually take this out without taking off the button panel and get a look at the actual LED module itself, which has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a nine digit, but, um, but this bubble is not actually um, populated, it's empty. We'll see if we can grab a shot for you guys on that, yep. This camera does do good up close focus. And you can see the um, soldering quality is very amateur and uh, probably by someone who was fairly new to it at the time when they had built this. So we'll pop him back in there. Thankfully this thing does go back together just as easily as it comes apart. And then, uh, the uh, yeah, thankfully that stick has remained intact or I wouldn't know what way the batteries go in. But I can use this to actually get all these into a position where they actually contact stuff. But yeah, it's not uncommon to replace the batteries in this and find, yeah, it's not working. Case in point, we've actually got it working. <laughs> That's a rare thing. So yeah, that's the Sinclair Cambridge. Uses the same chipset as the Royal Digital. So, well, not same, but similar. Has exactly the same quirks, such as being a, actually attempting to divide by zero, which is a mathematically impossible thing to do, but it's going to goddamn try anyway. I don't know if it'd ever even stop that loop if you just, if you had ability for powering it for eternity. I don't know if it actually <laughs> eventually comes to the conclusion, oh, this doesn't work. But yeah, interesting little calculator, a nice little one. And uh, probably one of the more interesting ones of the collection because, well, like a lot of these 70s cameras, it doesn't have the percent key. It has constant, though. So you can do... 2 times 2, dun, 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 dun. Although this one is not uh, odd. 4, yeah, okay. Constant 2 times 2. Also helps if you actually know. There we go. Yeah. That's what constant does. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I think we'll do the next vintage calculator overview teardowny type thing. I should create my.
category for calculators, actually. 